Hi, Bob. Hi. So, welcome to uh, another edition of the Defender Diaries, Land Rover Defender Diaries. And uh, that's Bob Rupani and I'm Rishad Sam Mehta. And I'm a travel writer and a photographer. And I primarily write about road travels because uh, I believe that road trips are the best way to see a place, to get the maximum from a trip is to go by road. And growing up, Land Rovers have always been a part of my life because I was not fortunate enough to own one. But uh, growing up in Dada Parsi colony, I saw uh, a few people had them and I would get to ride in them, often going to Lonavla, where at that time, I'm talking about the late 70s, the roads were really broken and they had these secluded houses. And I remember that even the monsoon, the Land Rover would take it all in its stride. And uh, in fact, my love for road travel is tied up with Land Rovers and uh, trips in these cars that are very capable. And that is what, what has made me want to explore by road. And uh, coming to the Defender, I'm really keen on uh, getting my hands on one because it's a momentous occasion for the new Defender to be launched in India uh, soon, in the middle of October. And uh, with talking with me just now, is Bob Rupani, of course, who needs no instruction, but I'll still I'll say a few words. Bob has been around for the last 35 years uh, in the automotive uh, field in India. He has been the he has been the executive editor for plenty of magazines, and Bob is also the founding member of the Indian Car of the Year and has been the chairman of the same for multiple years. Right. And uh, in fact, Bob and me go back to about 20, 25 years because when I did my first road trip, it was Bob who helped me uh, chalk out the route up in the Kumao. And he told me, go here, go there. I remember he gave me hand, hand drawn maps and uh, I followed that and I had a great trip. So, Bob, tell us about yourself and tell us about your 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 first experiences with uh, the Land Rover Series 1 and Series 2. Uh, first, uh, let me say something, Rishad. When you had come to me, uh, like you said, maybe 20, 22 years back, uh, I was uh, very uh, impressed to meet a young man like you who wanted to go out exploring the country, go riding and driving everywhere. So, And, you know, when I gave you those routes and made those maps, I never uh, imagined at that time that you would actually, uh, you know, grow up to be one of my favorite writers. I Thank you. I enjoy reading the stuff you do. I love the way you explore places. And uh, honestly, I'm very proud of what you've done, Rishad. Thank you, Bob. So tell uh, me, you were telling me about the, uh, you, you had mentioned that, that uh, your first experience with Land Rovers was the movie Born Free. You're very right. Uh, you know, it, I, must, I think it was in class four when I, our school, the St. Xavier's High School in Bombay, took us to the Regal, Regal Cinema to see this film, Born Free. And, you know, those days, every outing was like a picnic. I went just thinking, oh, it's another picnic. But I never realized that while watching the film, there was a transition that was happening within me, you know. And uh, it was uh, incredible. I mean, uh, I saw the African vistas for the first time, all the open plains, the wildlife. And right in the middle of that, everywhere was this Land Rover Defender. Uh, it would go through the water, it would go through the bush, surrounded by wildlife, and then this lioness would occasionally come by and climb onto the roof. And watching the film, I got completely fascinated, of course, with the African landscape, but even more with the Land Rover Defender. And I said to myself, you know, as a kid, it just left such an impression on me. And I said, wow, that is a vehicle. I remember that lioness was called Elsa, and he would fire two shots with his gun, dum dum, and the lioness would come. That was his call <laughs> sign to her. It, it, it was a beige. used to jump onto the roof, yes. Yes, it was a beige colored uh, Land Rover. In fact, my first, my first experience, the first time I really read about an iconic Land Rover was this book called The First Oland by Tim Slessor. It's about these two uh, Land Rovers that went from London to Singapore in 1955. Okay, and because they were sponsored by the universities in England, they were called the uh, uh, Oxford and Cambridge Far East Expedition. And the 
uh, two landowners were called the uh, <clears throat> Oxford and Cambridge. They were nicknamed that, and there were six guys going. And I remember reading this book because it was fascinating. They went through Iran. The the Shah's army was so impressed by the landowners that they placed an order for the cars. They came through India, crossed the Ganges on a boat. They went through the old Stillwell Road, which was broken. They had rotting bridges and stuff like that. And so for me, this book was like a bible because it fueled all my wanderlust to want to do overland trips. And last year, Bob, imagine my surprise and my delight when I was in this customs yard in in China, the Tibet Autonomous Region of China, and and <clears throat> we were riding to the Everest base camp and trundling into that yard. Not trundling into yard comes this Land Rover, the SNX, the 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 one nicknamed Oxford. I mean, it was like seeing a ghost from the past just trundling in. And in fact, that Land Rover is now doing was doing a trip from. London from Singapore to London, 65 years later, and for me it was like one of those chance meetings, which was great. So I was really fascinated. That was one of the highlights of my trip last year. But Bob, tell me about your your overlanding trips with the Land Rover. Yeah, I'll tell you my. Uh, like I said, the relation with Land Rover started through the film Born Free. Uh, some years later, subsequently, in the 80s, I got involved with Indian Motorsport and was very fascinated with all what was happening around the world. We were yet a very close economy, didn't get things, but I remember asking any friend of mine who traveled out of the country to bring back for me, you know, uh, videotapes of the Camel Trophy. And uh, watching uh, the Land Rover Defenders in action in the Camel Trophy, which... Uh, you know, I think it is be the toughest off-road event ever organized. And uh, it, if the love affair started with Born Free, it was the camel trophy that sealed it and said, wow, this is a machine. It can go anywhere. They were building bridges with, you know, logs and going through rainforests and doing amazing stuff. It's the first time I saw winching happening and all that. Uh, it would mean that, you know, the camel trophy was something I had, go to bed with and wake up in the morning imagining I'd been there. Of course, I never got to make it there. But let me tell you, I since then have been collecting Camel Trophy shirts and possibly yes. have a huge collection that wear them with a lot of pride. So the relation with Land Rovers got sealed with the Camel Trophy, yes. You also uh, have done an overland trip from, uh, for, from uh, London to Bombay? Uh, no, it's you're right. I did an overland trip uh, on the Silk Road. It was a Land Rover expedition from Berlin to Bombay. Berlin to Bombay. And, uh, oh, yes. I was fortunate to be uh, invited to be there. Uh, it actually was a little different. They were looking for someone to be the expedition leader or help them with the India leg. And somewhere my name came up, and when they approached me, I said, I'm more than happy, but I want to drive more of the event too. So I went on the Silk Road with them. And you know what was great, Rishad, is that on the event, the expedition leaders that were there, some of them turned out to be the guys who used to participate in the Camel Trophy. Camel Trophy. Yeah, so they were my heroes whom I'd seen on film and things like that. And then several years later, I find, you know, like 30 odd years of <coughs> later, well, yeah, 30, this was in 2013, I think I did it. So in the 80s, I used to watch them on the videotapes, which was so difficult to get hold of. And then, you know, some 30 years later, I'm driving alongside them. These were my heroes. And driving, uh, you know, uh, the, the, it was a Range Rover Evoque. And then a couple of years later, they asked me to join them again to drive across uh, the great uh, Australian desert, which was, again, unbelievable. We were... I was told the first civilians in some 20 years to be allowed access to those parts of the desert to go down that the gun barrel road. And this is in Australia. I, yes, this is Australia. So I did the first expedition with them was the Silk Road. I did in 2013 and then 2015 I went with them on the Australian desert expedition. So these were the same bunch of guys and we became very good friends. And they yet, uh, whenever they would meet me, they say, how many Camel Trophy shirts are you carrying? That's good, that's good. I have, I have also, for, as for me, I have, uh, like I was fortunate to uh, work with uh, a car magazine where my work was to travel in India and write a series about driving holidays. 
and uh, so so i have had great overlanding experiences in india you know and uh, i mean even india is a fascinating country to travel in there's so much to see so 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 much different terrain so much different food you know the food i'm sure food plays a big big part in all in your travels too in my travels too then the people you meet on the road especially in india actually that's all over the world. the people you meet on the road are so friendly everyone wants to help you you know basically i think road travel reinforces your your uh, what do you say reinforces the fact that your belief in the good in people that there is more good there's more good than bad in people that's what road travel does at least for me that is the that is the case what do you think I, I about think, i think you you absolutely right rishad in my view uh, you know the best education you get is through travel you could go to your schools and universities and everything but the learning you get when you leave your home and you go out exploring and meet different people <laughs> in different parts of india and different parts of the world it changes your outlook to life it's the biggest education i think comes from i know it is experience. fantastic fascinating it's really fascinating in fact another another thing of course in india is is a uh, is our wildlife our wildlife and on the first trip that you sent me on i remember i saw a tiger while riding i mean i a tiger walked past the road when i was riding down from from nainital to kaladungri along the back road via malital but bob you also had some great uh, wildlife experiences in india right with with land rovers isn't that true yes you are very right again but i'll take you back a little it's actually my first experience of uh, driving uh, land rover vehicles and seeing wildlife was uh, in africa yeah i told you about the born free film but then i had the opportunity in 1988 and 1990 to travel to the safari rally held in kenya and uh, yeah i in fact uh, shekhar mehta who i met when he had come to india for the himalayan rally helped facilitate that whole trip and uh, his nephew jay mehta gave me a range rover to go you know driving along the route of the safari rally and uh, subsequently after the rally since i had the opportunity and i was there i spent uh, three four weeks driving all around kenya and going to all the reserves and that is my first real experience of driving it was a 1978 range rover the first generation range rover and uh, incredible car huge glass area and through it through the windscreen through the side windows you're looking at giraffes and elephants and huge herds of wildebeest and cheetahs and i saw all the big five and uh, it was amazing and the ease with which that range rover and the comfort that it went through that i had never experienced ride quality like that i would have never imagined that you could be driving over such you know broken roads and off road and broken terrain but in so much comfort the whole body movement was like it was for those days it was incredibly good suspension and you know thanks to the fact that i knew we were going to have this conversation i pulled couple of things out i must show you I got my ID tag from the safari rally yet with me. Wow. Yeah, okay. considerably, and, considerably more hair. Like yeah, me. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, these were lying somewhere in some bag in the loft. But I made sure <laughs> I pulled these out to show you. I also but, pulled out. But, and Bob, I remember your in that one tag. It has your trademark cap. The first time I met you, I I used to see you at the press events. You saw how I have your trademark P cap. I again caps like you said. I have a fondness for caps and hats. I got about three hundred plus of them, or maybe more, sitting indoors in the house now. I thought if I wear one, it would look odd. But anyway, <laughs> I must tell you, I even found my nineteen ninety poncho from the safari rally. Wow, wow! So and what? Nice you and now they're going to be kept somewhere where I can, you know, have them on display somewhere in the house. Uh, <clears throat> Bob, there's also an incident that you had once told me about. Uh, about the fact that how you were waiting for the you know i think in australia or africa i'm not sure how you were waiting for the river to subside and this guy comes across and tells you that dude what are you doing man i mean you got a range rover just go go man yeah, just yeah. go yeah it was it was actually on the 1988 safari rally uh 
we were on one of those transport sectors, long transport sector, and I had never seen the kind of cloud bursts that happened in Africa, you know. And suddenly it was like the whole skies opened up and water came down in gushes and there was this river in front of us which was <laughs> blowing fast and breaking its banks and, you know, it looked really deep and muddy. It was all fresh mud being washed, to, washed down from some hill somewhere. And I stopped in the Range Rover. I'm waiting. And this guy came alongside me, local man, in the pickup. And he looked at me and he said, what's up? Like, what are you waiting for? I said, I'm waiting for the water to, you know, subside. And he started laughing. He said, you're in the Range Rover. Come on, man, just go. And he banged the side of his, like, pickup, hit it on the door. And he, he, he just, he drove through. And I was looking at him and I said, all right, if he says go, go, let's go. So I, you know, with a lot of hesitation, put that Range Rover in the water and it came out on the other side with the absolute ease, the confidence that, that <coughs> one incident inspired in me in the, you know, altering capability of these machines. Uh, remains with me, of course, till today. After that, I've experienced a lot more extreme driving in these vehicles. But that was my first time where uh, it took a local man to tell me that the kind of image that these vehicles have. And the guy was like, why are you waiting? You should be just driving through. In fact, when I was in South Africa, I was talking to one of the uh, 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 rangers at the park over there. Now, he was one of these, uh, you know, the, what do you say, the wood trekkers, the, the Dutch who had come really generation, generations back, they had come there, right? So he was telling me that ever since the, ever since after the Second World War, I mean, every person in their family who has been born, the first car and the only car they knew for years because they used to be so deep in the bush were Land Rovers, were Landys. They used to call them Landys. Uh, this is the car we always knew because there was no consideration of taking any, any other car or buying any other car because of the kind of distances in the terrain and the sudden change that you saw the cloud burst, rivers to cross. I mean, in fact, I remember in South Africa, I saw an ad also once that said SUV of the year for Land Rover before the term SUV was invented. You know, that, that's what Land Rovers are. So, Bob, uh, I mean, you're quite old and at overlanding and at road trips and all that. So, um, I know a few things. I know about uh, overlanding. I know the fact that you've got to choose your companions carefully because if you don't gel with them, I mean, it can be a disaster. You've got to choose, you've got to plan. I mean, road travel has spontaneity also, but you should have a general plan, right? And uh, what else do you think that you is essential, an essential preparation to see that uh, that road, tra road travel adventure doesn't turn into a misadventure? First, I will uh, again repeat what you said, is that it's very, very important to have the right companion. Of course, the vehicle is uh, very important, obviously. But uh, after that, you need to have a like-minded person with you. Otherwise, your trip can uh, you know, end up being a disaster. I always like to have a tow strap or a tow rope in the vehicle because you know, we are such a populated country that even when you're you know, in a very rural, desolate area, you, in a few hours time, someone is sure to come by. And if you are unfortunate enough to have a breakdown, you just request someone, they will always throw you to the nearest village or town or wherever you can get help. So having a tow strap is very good. I'm also, I like to have good music in a car, a variety of music. And I like to, because, you know, with long distance drives, when you do them, like you do, I do, we go out for weeks on end. And uh, you get into what I like to call, you know, highway hypnosis or road hypnosis after a while you get into that zone where you're driving and i like good music whether it's indian indian films to western rock I, I have a huge collection of music that i like to travel with i'm also fussy about how things are kept in the car i like everything kept in packed in a proper manner i don't like any loose things around i don't like trash in a car i don't like anyone eating in the car so I always carry a little wicker basket, a cloth, which, you know, you park in a nice place, spread out on the bonnet, have a meal or coffee or whatever. But I don't like eating in a car. I don't like litter, like I said. And uh, very well packed is something I am particular about. All the loose stuff on top, heavy stuff down, nothing moving around, no rattles in a car. 
you're spending days and days, weeks and hours in it. So I like it to be a little organized space. Okay. What and, and what? For, but also, also nowadays, nowadays it is very important, if, according to me, because uh, I've just I've just done a drive from Bombay to Delhi recently. I had this. You no, know, you need to have all this stuff like uh, fast tags where you can or or the proper documentation in order. You know, because uh, there are many random checks, especially if you're going over a multi-country trip. You should. I feel that you should have a proper dossier for your car and for every passenger with multiple copies of stuff kept properly and everybody is responsible for his. Plus, you've also got to manage the cash, you know, see that you have a stash of cash hidden away somewhere because you're going on a long drive, stuff like that. I think stuff like that also, is very, paperwork is very important because, you know, a customs official and say that, that I want to check everything and you're going to have everything in order. You now the tap, 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 it goes. That's the kind of stuff. That's, that is very good advice. Uh, nice to be well prepared with those things. You, Rishal, were asking me about some of my drives with wildlife in India. And uh, I was, uh, I think it was around 2012 or something. A friend of yours, very dear friend of mine, Shapur Kothwal, he, one of the evenings we were spending out somewhere, he said, Bob, it's time, you know, you do a book on wildlife. He said, you've done so many on driving and cars and things like that. He said, I really want you to do a book on wildlife. So I started work on a book on wildlife and uh, I was fortunate to get Land Rover to support it. They got born free to support it and they gave me the vehicles to go driving out all around India. And a book, I did a book called, you know, Tracking the Tiger. Now, you know wow. what you know? It was. When this book was being done, I had no idea that in the end, the forward would be written by Virginia McKenna, the oh, same wow. lady who starred in the Born Free film. Yeah. Wow. And to me, it was an incredible moment. And she went through the book and she liked it. And I made sure we put a photograph of the Land Rover, which, which my relation started. Yeah. Seeing she, the she star in the Born Free film. She's the one. She's the one who played the Joe Joe Adams, right, in the movie. It, it, exactly. Exactly. So, while doing this book, I had some really very amazing experiences. I'll tell you of two. Uh, this was, I remember very clearly, 15th of June. I'm not sure of the year, 2012 or 2013. But 15th of June, I remember because it was the day the forest was to shut for the monsoon season. So, it was our last drive, in a sense, in a tiger reserve. This was in Nanzira Tiger Reserve. And I was driving a freelander, and as luck would have it, while we were at the entry gate to go into the forest, it started raining. And uh, you know, the range officer there said, "Please be very careful. You know, there are dirt tracks in there, and if it continues raining, it will get very slippery. Please be very careful and things like." And we went on, and uh, subsequently we crossed another forest officer who was in a local four-wheel drive, who again said, "Please." You know, be very careful and things like that. It's raining really hard. And before you knew it, it was pouring so heavily and all the mud was washing off everywhere and it was really slippery. I remember, you know, that uh, just selecting one of the mud modes and driving, it was felt so easy. But all around us, I saw other vehicles with the tourists that had gone off. Somewhere or the other got stuck. And uh, I actually, rescued a few of them and got them back. Again, it instilled a huge respect for the all-terrain capability of these vehicles. Uh, another experience I must tell you about was I was in uh, a wildlife sanctuary called Palpur Kuno in Madhya Pradesh and the driving a Range Rover Sport. Since this is not a place which is uh, open really commercially to tourists and I was there more as a guest of the Madhya Pradesh Forest Department who wanted my views on what the forest was like, what tourism prospects were like, and things like that. So we were even allowed to go out driving in the night, accompanied by the forest department people. And I had this friend of mine who was sitting in front, and was, the Range Rover Sport had brilliant lights. And in, in the distance, we saw something shining in the light. And it was just one eye we could make out. It's an eye of an animal, but it was so low to the ground. And it was a huge eye and absolutely still. 
both of us just couldn't figure out what it was. Even the forest of, uh, officials sitting behind us kept looking and he's, no one could figure out, you know, what animal it is. And it was like stuck to the ground so low. You know, when we came close, I actually got the start of my life. It was a culvert that we were going over. As I entered the culvert, the crocodile head of a, yeah, crocodile's head sticking out and it was his eye. Huge I, one, I, like I, golf ball that was, you know, in the, it was an incredible sighting. And this crocodile leapt up <laughs> right in front of us onto the culvert. I think it was a little confused for a moment, looked at us straight into wow. the headlights, right and down there, seven, eight, seven, eight feet long crocodile in front of the bonnet, literally. And, and uh, then it jumped into the water. And since I had my, you know, window open, enjoying the forest, Water splashed all into the car from the crocodile that leapt right across in front of us. It was one of the most incredible sightings I've had. Talk about crocodiles. I remember an experience I had in the Northern Territory. Again, with the Land Rover, I was driving. I had, I hired one and I was driving through. And again, there's this river. So the, as the rivers, uh, river swells in the day, they close the crossing. So I was one of the last cars to go through. And there's a part in the center where the bonnet actually disappeared under the water. But when it came out, there was a baby crocodile sitting on the bonnet. It was sitting there. A baby crocodile sitting at the end, just scampered off. I'm talking, I'm talk it's really a small one on the bonnet. And, and the guys were laughing. They say, yeah, it happens all the time. You're lucky mate, you didn't get into the car. You know, they were so, they were so <laughs> casual about it. Achha, Bob, uh, I've, got to, I've got to ask you. So now the new Defender is coming out, right? It's being launched. Uh, it's being launched soon. Middle of October, it's coming to India. So what? What is the? What is the one trip that you're looking forward to doing with the new Defender? And what is the new uh, the accessory pack that you take with you? So I, I, there are several packs. I think four of four of them, if I'm not mistaken. I would either go for the Explorer or the Adventure pack. Uh, and the winch. That, uh, yes, of course. And they offer accessories like a winch, rooftop tent. You know, <coughs> I just love the idea. I they also offer steel wheels. I would take the steel wheels for. In sure. our the steel wheels. I just love the steel wheels. I mean, because yeah. they can be hammered into place, and no, I mean, if they're the puncture, if they're bent with a hatoda, no problem. There are a few things about this new Land Rover Defender that I'm very, very impressed with. Uh, one is the fact that they've managed to retain the DNA, the old heritage. You know, if you park, I think, the earlier generations and the new generation alongside and let the shadow fall on the ground, you see the profile is almost the same. So there is a very similar profile. I like that. I like that they've kept the ruggedness. You know, they haven't gone and smoothened it out or rounded. It's yet very square. It's very, very strong. It's got all the all terrain capability it has the four wheel drive you know transfer case the low transfer case you have additional set of gears for low range which is a huge advantage uh, then they have matched that with all the technology you know the water wading depth is high but then they got these uh, sensors that detect the water wading depth in the uh, i think the outside door mirrors and so when you are going, coming to the limit of the water wading depth, you get an alarm. Then it's got these 360 degree cameras. And also the through the wheels view. Yeah. The through the wheels view, you know, through the front wheels view. Exactly what's exactly under your bonnet and stuff like that. So I'm waiting to drive the car to experience all this. But where I'd like to go with it is undoubtedly Africa. So I would love to take the Land Rover and drive across Africa and see wildlife through it. Because I have actually seen a lot of wildlife driving Land Rovers and uh, uh, various other, you know, whether it's Range Rover, Land Rovers, really enjoyed seeing wildlife in there. For me also, I mean, the same thing. Also, another thing about the car, what I really like that they've retained is the short overhangs, you know, so you can really, the approach angles are, are nice and, and generous. So that short overhangs are great. But for me, for me, I'm, for me, the dream ever since has been this Bombay London overland through through the old Silk Route. That has been my dream. So that is what I want to do with the Land Rover. 
no go go take it and take it take the real the real route not the shortcut route that most people take going to kazakhstan and russia i want to take the real route going across then uh, circumnavigating the caspian sea going into turkey driving uh, into europe across the continental divide in turkey and no, that no, is no, my no, dream to rishad rishad someone like you has to go over the khyber pass and the bolan pass you yeah but that is not unfortunately course. unfortunately that is not possible right now but uh, maybe one day because the political political scenario can't do it right now but maybe one day and the the pack i take is the explorer pack i just love that pack and of course the fact that they give the winch as a standard accessory now i definitely have a winch in my car as and as you said a toe strap you really need that and that you know the pulley thing so you get a fulcrum you know that so you get a triangular place to pull pull something out or or help somebody out so i would take the winch for sure definitely so good bob you know uh, they also have those uh, what are they called those side pockets on the you know behind the yeah, rear yeah storage boxes storage boxes the on storage, the, on the, the side storage boxes i yeah. just love the unique idea of whoever designed them you know I, that's where I keep all my hats and caps and stuff like that. If you went out in that vehicle, right, right, right. That is that. I mean, the stuff that you want to want to get out of the car because otherwise the, the rear seat gets so cluttered with the stuff that you take out. For example, if it's cold outside and warm in the car, the rear seat is cluttered. This is great because you can put all your stuff there. I mean, it's a very, very practical vehicle. I'm so yeah. happy they have retained all that. You know, right. So great. So Bob, this was good. It was great talking to you. and uh, i'm looking forward to driving the car maybe we could do a trip together once we get our hands on the car and uh, that would be great of course there i'm sure there will be a lot of wildlife and food these are the two verticals of a road trip for me wildlife and food and good music and good stories of course from you so no, 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 anyway I, i'll I, see you I, soon I, i think that's a i think that's a very good idea we've actually known each other so long and we and never been on a road trip together so many years we share so many common passions but we've never done a road trip together maybe the land rover defender will bring us together on yeah. one of the trips okay chal bob nice talking to you and i'll see you Real soon sure bishal thanks take okay. care